Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Shri Mule from Memorial University in Canada. Good to have you with us, Shri. Good to be here. Recently we find a lot of foundations, philanthropic in nature, allegedly, coming into the issue of public health. And there has been some discussions that they tend to make it one item, uh, one pr program dominated, technology driven and it distorts the public health concerns in those countries. What would be your response to this? I think it's true that uh, with the entry of uh, foundations such as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or the Clinton Foundation, and there are many such foundations, that they tend to focus on a few things such as tuberculosis, uh, HIV, the HIV is a big item. And, uh, it has been um, at least my understanding that they distort the entire public health agenda because they focus on fixing a few problems and all the resources go to that. As a result, the larger public health uh, agenda gets neglected. And that's very clear in Africa. It's very clear in a country like India where certain things are being promoted certain pharmaceuticals are promoted, certain procedures are promoted. And I think that that's where the problem lies. As a result, the government, the state government or the, uh, you know, the union government, they, are, they do not have control of that public health agenda in a certain sense. Or sometimes they negotiate it, but they still don't have the full control of it. Also, the public health <coughs> directions taken by countries today quite often the small countries get to tend driven by uh, what the larger foundations are saying. So quite often it appears that they, for instance, would forget that the largest number of deaths could be due to diarrhea, which is entirely preventable, and focus on HIV exclusively. No, that is um, no doubt, but I think it's a larger issue than that, because I think that what is what we are beginning to see is that uh, the independence which is required in implementing public health agenda is taken away from the, the local governments. And that is because they begin to depend on this influx of funding. And therefore they shift and change and forget what's important, such as diarrheal diseases, such as uh, the whole question of uh, um, uh, you know, clean water sanitation. These are fundamental issues which still dominate the public health agenda. Uh, the uh, fact remains that uh, some people have taken up, I mean, you know, the Millennium uh, Development uh, um, you know, goals, the MDG goals, focused very much on maternal health and mortality as one issue. Now that's being taken up by some countries, but it has, their sh focus has shifted. What they are saying is that we need people in, uh, to have all deliveries take place in hospitals. Fact is that 60 to 70 percent of deliveries in a country like India still take place in the home, in the villages, and they, they're not in public institutions. So, and there is no guarantee that if you are in a public institution that you will necessarily get good care because you are poor. I mean, if you're a poor person, even if you go into a public institution, you don't get a, you know, a hospital setting, you don't necessarily get good treatment. So by trying to eliminate the traditional birth attendants, by saying that there should be skilled birth attendants, you are completely neglecting what is, the, what is required by the country. Public health would really, as you said, mean clean drinking water, employment, food, those are really also the drivers. So there's also, is there in, the, in this sense an ideological attempt in some sense to drive the agenda towards disease and not towards health? By and large, I would agree with you that uh, the focus is very much, I mean, the health has been redefined. It is, uh, you know, if you look at the UN Universal Charter of Public Health, it defines health in a much wider context of uh, uh, health and well-being and that kind of a definition. Whereas if you simply try to just get rid of diseases, then you are not looking at the most important part of it, which is prevention, which is far more effective than 
just finding drugs to treat this uh, disease or that disease. So that is where we need to focus our attention and it has been, and there is to come back to the question that you asked, that is there something else happening? Of course, the social, political, economic, all of these uh, systems impact on public health. You know, they talk about eliminating poverty. Now, poverty is the largest, you know, the, the social determinants of health are the most important factors if you want to reduce uh, the impact, if you want to make an impact and a dent in the health of a nation. There is also this issue of NGOs being active with this kind of trials. Now, do you think NGO, this is really something that they should be doing? Don't you think this is something which is much more commercially to be done or done by the state? I certainly think that the state has a responsibility in developing drugs for neglected diseases which affect uh, the population in developing countries because there's no pharmaceutical company that is willing to invest that kind of money because they know that their returns will not be there very much in the when they uh, commercialize drugs which are for neglected diseases. Should the state conduct it? Uh, I'm not entirely sure that the state, uh, in order to have that, they need to have the capacity to be able to conduct The state today does not have the The state today capacity. does not have the capacity to do it. So should NGOs be involved in it? NGOs have been involved in trials for a very long time. Since the 60s, they have been involved in trials. And I'm particularly thinking of uh, contraceptive research, where uh, uh, IUDs were first, uh, uh, its uh, trials were held by uh, NGOs. Uh, no plant, most classically, was tried out in Indonesia in a very uh, large scale. Also by PATH. Also by PATH. I mean, PATH was one Same of the... Same one which is involved yeah. in the HPV trials. That's right. So that they have been involved for a very long time in uh, this. So um, uh, NGOs have been involved and uh, they have... And in fact, in India, the, one of the biggest scandals was uh, around uh, cervical cancer. I don't know if you recall that, but one of the NGOs was asked to monitor uh, women in a particular village and I don't have the details uh, at, the, at my fingertips right now but they in fact they were uh, sending reports on these women uh, collecting samples sending it in and this agency that was collecting all the information they in fact did not tell the, what the outcome was as a result many of these women developed uh, cervical cancer they only wanted to see the uh, what was the course of the disease and how quickly would it come back? So uh, some and the, the the NGO, the Indian NGO, had no idea that this was part of the uh, study trial. There is a you will probably if you do the research on this, you will find references to this. I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do, but I think that uh, sometimes you have better safeguards because NGOs sometimes do have. Uh, what should I say, uh, a philanthropic, uh, you know, uh, anyway, uh, an agenda that they think is somewhat... Could, but sometimes there could also be corporate agendas masquerading as NGOs. But uh, coming back to the other issue which is there, that if you really look at the way this kind of clinical trials are being conducted, would we say that uh, there is an attempt in that sense to uh, really weaken the in the protocols, the procedures that have to be put in place to see that these trials are conducted properly? Apparently this particular trial was, uh, HPV trial conducted by PATH was approved by ICMR. And uh, to me it's a question of what is ICMR doing? Mm -hmm. Have they thought of all the implications of this? I don't have the information. I think that, uh, I hope that somebody is asking for uh, the information on the actual protocol um, uh, which was uh, approved by ICMR because I think it will be critical to analyze that and to find out had they thought long term what the consequences would be and have they built that in, into the protocol. And it is really institutions like that that have to take the responsibility but I Looking at some of the documentation that has that I have seen, you know, in relation to the ART, that is the artificial, the assisted uh, human reproduction uh, act, 
I find that it's full of holes, weaknesses. Uh, they have just, uh, they, they, there is a social assumption of uh, what the family structure is, what the needs are. And those are things that they have not paid sufficient attention to. I mean, uh, the whole question of health, I think, is so embedded in our social cultural values. And they are reflected in the documents that the, they, they have put forward. So uh, when we talk about ethics and ethical implementation of clinical trials, one has to examine those values as well in order to make sure that they do not reflect the narrow patriarchal values that society has at the moment. Thanks. I think this is very interesting. I hope we'll see you in India again. You will indeed. Discussions. <laughs> right.